The Hyperloop. Super fast personal transportation at extremely high speeds of 600 miles or 1000 kilometers per hour within a vacuum tube. For more than a decade now, since Elon Musk himself published the idea in a white paper back in 2013, the dream of Hyperloop has fascinated and enraged people equally it seems. Many said that it was impossible, that we would never be able to travel as fast as airplanes but on the ground instead of in the air. Many vocal critics made a lot of videos in which they were super convinced that it was all just hot air and that it would never come to pass. But now, more than a decade after Elon Musk's white paper, it seems as if we've finally started to make some real progress. So which company is it that is finally making progress? Is it Hyperloop TT? Is it Virgin Hyperloop? Is it Zelaris Hyperloop? No, it turns out that the best chance we have to see a real Hyperloop is coming from China. For the longest time it indeed seemed that the critics were right. One company after another failed to bring Hyperloop to the market. One city or region after another announced bold plans to build Hyperloops. Dubai in 2020, India a few years ago with their Pune Mumbai Hyperloop project, even Europe and some US states were contemplating a Hyperloop. In the late 10s and early 20s, the Hyperloop transportation idea was all the rage. But now, quite a few years later, none of these projects have materialized. In fact, some promising Hyperloop companies such as Virgin Hyperloop, which was also known as Hyperloop One, even went bankrupt. In the case of Virgin Hyperloop, the bankruptcy came in November 2022 after they had initially built a short test track in Nevada and even had two people travel a short distance in a small Hyperloop pod in late 2020. Yes, it is absolutely clear that this was a pure publicity stunt and that this was a far cry from coming even remotely close to a real Hyperloop. After all, the two test passengers traveled a distance of only 500 meters at a maximum speed of 107 miles or 175 kilometers per hour, which is a far cry from the target speed of 600 miles or 1000 kilometers per hour. But there was still hope that Virgin Hyperloop was at least still working on this thing. At least until it went bankrupt, that is. But even apart from Virgin Hyperloop or Hyperloop One, progress with the other Hyperloop companies looks meager as well. The main competitor of Virgin Hyperloop, a company called Hyperloop TT, has been struggling as well for years now. And they also haven't really built anything apart from a short test track and some mock-ups of how the future Hyperloop pods are going to look like. They still announce things from time to time. For instance, earlier this year they announced a Hyperloop project to connect the two Italian cities of Venice and Padua and they even have relocated their headquarter to Italy. However, just in March this year it came to light that they are struggling massively financially speaking. They weren't able to pay their employees salaries in some cases and at times not even able to pay the rent for their offices. So we can't be sure how long that company, which by the way goes back all the way to 2013 like Virgin Hyperloop, will even survive. Then the other Hyperloop companies like Zeleros Hyperloop or Delft Hyperloop also don't have a lot to show for. Yes, sometimes some small milestones such as recently a lane switch in the case of the Delft Hyperloop was achieved or Celeros joined a Hyperloop development program. But these are all just very small steps and none of all these companies have as of yet achieved any significant breakthroughs or even built large scale models or built long test tracks. So it seems that the critics were right then after all, doesn't it? Yes, I'm afraid so, dear friends of Hyperloop. The Hyperloop was indeed just a beautiful pipe dream. Bye. Or not. Because there always seems to be one global player that picks up ideas 
I don't want to say copies them, but yes, we could say that, and then implements them on a much more massive and grand scale than all the competitors. I am, of course, talking about China. 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 That country is certainly no stranger to futuristic and advanced transportation concepts. It's the only country with an operating maglev train connecting Shanghai's airport with the city center. And this thing has been in operation since 2004. So for 20 years now. Then, it's also one of the few countries where you can find lots of monorails in operation. Such as for instance in the incredible city of Chongqing, which really looks like a real-life cyberpunk city. And last but not least, China has managed to build the largest high-speed bullet train network in the world in record time. The first line was built only back in 2007. And now, 14 years later, China's high-speed railway network has a total length of 45,000 kilometers or 28,000 miles, which is more than 11 times that of the second largest high-speed railway network in the world, belonging to the country of Spain, which is only 3,966 kilometers or 2,464 miles in length. So China really has a lot of experience when it comes to high-speed and high-tech transportation concepts. So it's thus only a logical conclusion that if someone would be able to pull off a working Hyperloop, then it would be China. And indeed it turns out that China has been working on this thing for a few years now. Recently their Hyperloop, which they call the T-Flight, has achieved a speed of 387 miles per hour or 623 kilometers per hour in a 2 kilometer or 1.2 mile long test tube. It has thus managed to surpass the previous record holder, Japan's Chuo Shinkansen prototype with 603 kph or 376 mph of speed. The Chinese Hyperloop test tube was evacuated to a low pressure vacuum so that the friction between the pod and the surrounding air was minimized. The T-Flight is a maglev train so it hovers over the tracks and never touches them being held up by magnetic levitation technology. The whole system was built by the state-owned China Aerospace Science and Industry Corporation, KASIC in short. And this is in my opinion the reason why this particular Hyperloop will see the highest chances of success. Because if the state backs a project in China, there's great will and also great funds that will flow into the project. Contrary to the West, where companies have to get funding themselves in a free market environment. KASIC has already announced plans to expand the test track from 2 kilometers to a whopping 60 kilometers or 37 miles and so to reach the next speed milestone of 621 miles or 1000 kilometers per hour, faster than a standard commercial aircraft. But of course, China being China, they don't want to stop there. And so they are already toying around with ideas to connect Beijing and Wuhan, two cities that are 655 miles or 1055 kilometers apart. But for that track, Kasich is not content with the regular 1000 kph or 621 miles per hour speed. No, no. For this connection, they are aiming for a 2000 km per hour or 1243 miles per hour of speed. That is absolutely insane. This would be twice as fast as an airliner. This would be Mach 2, so twice the speed of sound. I am unsure if such a speed can be reached within a reasonable safety tolerance. 1000 kph would already be insane enough, but let's see how this will unfold once China has expanded the test track and reaches the next speed milestones. In any case, if they can reach that ludicrous speed, then the trip from Beijing to Wuhan with the T-Flight would take only a bit more than half an hour. So it's really interesting to have China enter the Hyperloop race with state-owned company. Because we know that competition is good. And if China can show that a Hyperloop for the transportation of people is indeed really possible in a safe way, then maybe the West will also increase investments 
into the different Hyperloop companies. In any case, it seems that thanks to China, Hyperloop is not dead and might have chances of being realized after all. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe because we'll continue to make lots of videos on fascinating technological developments. And please consider supporting us on Patreon or via a YouTube membership because that would allow us to make more and even better videos. All the best wherever you are and see you next time.